Senorita. Even news standard. Early edition. Even news is standard. All the runners and riders. Paper. Even news is standard. <laughs> Okay, Fred. Hello, Mum. So you've done it again. Look, I've had a reply from your grandfather's lawyer. <laughs> Oh, Mum, you haven't been writing to Grandad again to get me another job, have you? And why not? It's time he took responsibility for his own grandson. But, Mum, he's the Prime Minister of Great Britain. He can't do anything for me. Don't be silly. Oh. He gets me all the wrong jobs. Banker, accountant. Stockbroker. I haven't been educated for that stuff. You have an appointment with him at 10.30. Now you come home and put on your best suit. You mustn't be late, whatever happens. been waiting an hour and ten minutes for you. But I couldn't help it. The traffic, traffic was, was terrible. terrible. I... Hello? Norman Shields here. Are you receiving me? Over. Wait, over. As Attorney General, Prime Minister, I have for many years beseeched you to accept responsibility for providing for your grandson. Damnation, Mr. Ballard. You know full well that I cut my daughter off without a penny when, when she married that, 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 that lout. I know, I know, but he is still your grandson, Sir Wilfrid. Times have changed. These are modern days. Modern days? Bah! Give me the good old days. Now, when I was on the threshold of life. Oh dear, not again. It, it, it seems but yesterday that that I was an undergraduate at, 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 um, uh, well, at, at Oxford. <laughs> and, and a, a fine, upstanding young fella. I was, too. That year, I met Isabel. I dreamt of the day when I could hold her in my arms. But the fulfillment of those dreams came as rather a surprise. Oh, Wilfred, you're magnificent. Such control, such grace. Oh, I say, do you really think so? Oh, absolutely. Such determination, such power, such strength. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, it's all right, darling. Uh, it's only shallow here. And I'll save you. <gasps> Here's a bell. Wilfred. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my darling Isabel, I adore you. Daddy! And so a marriage was arranged. The events took their natural course and a daughter was born. Little Emily grew up and blossomed into a true English rose. But alas, the beautiful rose became a thorn in my side. Women staged um, demonstrations demanding uh, equality. Emily became a suffragette and chaining herself uh, to, to the railings of this historic old building. She actually shouted, Votes for women! Votes for women! We demand sex equality. We want our rights. We want votes. We want to be recognized by all as the head of the family. We want equality. We demand our rights. We love Emily because of the way she fights. Chain me to the railings. Starve me. Let me die. Why can't women vote like men? Why, why, why? We want votes. We want to be recognized by all as the head of the family. Why don't you leave off? A woman's place is in the kitchen. Let's have a bit of peace and quiet. We want votes. Fate chose this precise moment to intervene. The rains came. Want to come down here? Votes for women! The boats for women! Boats for... Help! Blooded dignity of our family was shattered. And so the wedding took place between my daughter, Emily, and and <laughs> Bert Shields, a, a a sewer man, a union blessed by the birth of a son, my grandson, Norman. <clears throat> Morning, Mr. Ballard. You were expecting me? Yes. One hour and ten minutes ago. This way. Say hello. Hello. Uh, Granddad. No, don't you call me Granddad. Really, Prime Minister. After all, he is your grandson. And and you can't blame me. I hold your tongue and and sit down. <clears throat> so, what kind of job are we going to get him this time, Bellard? But I've already got a job, haven't I? Yesterday, I stumbled on what may prove to be a solution. Major Bartlett, one of your Conservative members, owns a newspaper. Uh, uh, Miss Thompson, 
Uh, see if you can find the Major Bartlett in the house. He's already here, sir. <clears throat> I took the liberty. Hmm. Uh, mm, yeah. uh, uh, journalism, there. Well, that's what I'm doing already. <laughs> in, in a way. In a, a way. I, I sell newspapers outside Westminster Tube Station, don't I? <laughs> I a news boy. Even Westminster. You knew, you knew about this, Bellard? Yes, Prime Minister. That's why I thought perhaps a change would be a good idea. Show me your, major, your, major, show me major, in. Uh, 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 Major um, um, uh, Barrows. Uh, Bartlett, sir. Major Rupert Irwin Bartlett. Uh, quite, sir. Uh, uh, you've considered my application? The junior ministerial vacancy, sir. Uh, uh, yes, a uh, 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 junior minister. Hmm. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. I don't think I've had the pleasure. You remind me of someone. Uh, uh, my grandson, uh, uh, Shields. Delighted to meet you. I say, you're not up for the junior minister, are you? No, I'm only a newspaper man. Uh, uh, um. Well, what a coincidence, so am I. Major Bartlett owns the Tinmouth Times, sir, in his own constituency. Little town in the West Country. Over 200 miles away. 200 miles? Oh, that's a nice long way away. Uh, my grandson was just telling me uh, how much he would like to work on a provincial newspaper. I say, Prime Minister, I have a splendid idea. Good. That's settled, then. He can start tomorrow morning. Well, thank you, Major. I won't take up any more of your but time. But, Prime Minister, the junior ministerial vacancy, could you give me a decision? Now, don't worry, Barclay. I've got your name well in mind. You sort out the travel arrangements, Bellard. Hmm? Um, One-way ticket to Tinmouth. It's already done, Prime Minister. Oh, oh. oh Bellard, 200 miles. <laughs> 200 uh. miles. Uh, Bellard, oh. Bellard. Oh. 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 Thank you. Uh, now, sir, we're wanted in the house. Miss Thompson will take care of you, Mr. Shields. Goodbye. Two hundred miles. Bellard, Bellard. Tinmouth! 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 Then. She got her back, though, that lady. Oh, yeah? Where? B Penzance. Can I have mine, please? Yeah. Here.
bad. Not at all bad. Ah, Shields. Barnett. Well, actually, you were due here at nine o'clock. Still, I suppose, the first morning. A bit of a rush, I expect. Mm. Well, I dare say you'd like to meet your colleagues. This is Mr. Norman Shields, our new reporter. Uh, Mr. Ross, the editor. Miss Lambton. I hope you'll be very happy with this. All right, come with me. Shields, I expect from my staff a capacity for work and punctuality. I regret to note that you appear to lack the last of these qualities. Understand? Right, Chief. You do shorthand, of course. I'm afraid not. You type? Mr. Shields, do you think you could cover this? Right, Chief. What is it? A jumble sale. Jumble sale? To be opened by the mayor, Alderman Corcoran, new congregation. Mr. Shields, I have read it. Right, Chief. Now, here is a map. You will find the congregational hall marked on this map. Right, Chief. Don't call me chief all the time. Notebook. Pencil. Got a bicycle? You'll have to buy one. Meantime, you can borrow one from Pearson. Right, Chief. I'm looking for the new congregational hall. That was it, over there. Fred. Fire. Huh? Hydrant. <laughs> no, I, I had this all. Press! 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 Tin with times. Make way for the press. Excuse me. Uh, uh, are you the mayor? Uh, <laughs> I've um, 
Uh, I've been sent to cover the jumble sale. Uh, press, you know. It's been postponed. Ah. Post. Pwned. Because of the fire. Talk to this gentleman. He is responsible. What, for the fire? Oh, oh, oh. No, no, for the jumble sale. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, I seem to have come too late tonight. But you can't be too late. I've already told you. It's been postponed. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Uh... You seen a bike? Stop, you know. Not right. Not right. Unfair to the others. That man, he's pinched my bike. Uh, has he now? Oh, oh, that's not right. No, no. Faster. 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 Yes. Faster. Follow that bike. Tell him to go faster. Go faster. Put your foot down hard. Watch where you're going. You've got to catch him. That's my bike he's on. Never mind about that queue. We'll call for him on the way back. Shall I tell him or you? Uh, you. All right. Hang on. Won't be long. We won't be long. I told him we won't be long. Excuse me. Very kind of you, Tubby. Don't let him gain on us, Tubby. Tell him not to let him gain. Don't let him gain on us. Well, go on, get a move on then. He's only got a bike, you've got a blooming great bus. Either hurry up and catch him or else go round the other way, will you? <laughs> Closing on him. That's it. Closing. Go on. No, go on. You're dropping behind a bit now. Good boy. <laughs> He's got my bike and I'm determined to have it. I say, I, I'm, I'm really most awfully sorry, but that wasn't my bike after all.
Can I help you? Oh, thank you very much. You are going in here, aren't you? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Young man, this isn't my... You again! Our new ace reporter. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the jumble sale. Oh, come on, cheer up. Have a drink. No, I don't really, um. Oh, come on. Be a devil. You're a reporter now. Eddie. Same again, Miss Lambton? Yes, but make it two. I think I'll have some of this. this same again. Eddie. I'm so glad I met you tonight. Can't tell you how glad. Well, I've got quite an evening ahead of me. Oh. I've to cover the council meeting. Well, no. Do you think I'll come with you? I've, I've, I've never been to a, never been to a council meeting. Well, you must be mad. But if you want to, you're very welcome. Marvelous. You ready, sir? See you. That's where the Lady Mayor, Alderman Mrs. Corcoran, sits. Labour, of course. Well, up there, doesn't she get dizzy? <laughs> the Lady Mayor is always dizzy. And so her council, for that matter. I heard what you said about the council. 
Let me inform you, sir, that the lady's remarks refer only to the Labour members, not to us Conservatives. Well, bully for you, Councillor Edge. Ah, there's the Mayor's husband. Conservative? No, Labour. Alderman Corcoran. About this agenda, I have something to say. You keep I... your ears open, Edge, and you'll hear what I have to say. Conservatives are on the right. Labour are on the left. The Labour have the majority. Glass of water. Hello, gorgeous. It's a bit crowded in here tonight. Oh, Harry Marsh of the County Chronicle, Norman Shields, the Times' latest edition. Here with Conville this trail, 1950 film by Grace Vathwell. The agenda which has on the minutes of this trail is duly held in the Housing Committee and Committee for Suburban Development. Uh, the Housing Housing, whose committee, which Gerton and Force forgotten this civil load down, has duly made, underlined, and thoroughly spoiled the asterisks which mark each one separate for your understanding. That's the I'm town clerk, Mr. Register. Nottage. Oh, oh, Bit of a bore, but it's all right. Yes, exactly, yes. Um, and the assistants which gave for this in this county council order have liaison is a service author. Hold the fort for me. And this I'll be back office for the speeches. And other council order take heed and a deep heed for this and enter a sound in their own council chamber over with their worship service for getting me the tool too. As a mutual agreed for it, if I may. As an intrude is to father the rivers console the Anglet brothers, but this doesn't really matter. Now, this Sandra, Hunderline and Hunderhound this Dale and Julie Hentrals and the Hansard who's house of Parliament serve the serpent for this, fully supported by the Hinderstroll on either side. Now I call upon Hordro Court. As chairman of the housing committee, I can say without fear of contradiction that our housing record is second to none. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I speak for us all on this side of the chamber when I say how proud we are of our achievements. Eighteen months and several crises ago, the building of phase one of our new block the speeches are on. consultants re examine the plan for the area in the light of a known economic situation. We have met with opposition. 
particularly from certain members She's on the opposite side of this uh, chamber. Uh, Petty restrictions and impediments. She's which, on with the uh, single-minded determination that we have always displayed in all our undertakings on behalf of the people of this town, we She's have overcome. Phone. Her boyfriend, I suppose. Nevertheless, it is with great pride and Boyfriend? Major Bartlett. For the Labour members of this council, each and the Major? Of Why not? He owns a newspaper. He's a member of Parliament. She knows what she's doing. During our term of office, we have built 1,000 houses. I don't believe it! So, Councillor Edge doesn't believe it. Councillor Flaming Edge has a flaming nerve to call me a liar to my face. I shall ask Councillor Flaming Edge to apologize at once. Point of order! Point of order! Sit the worthy Councillor Edge is going to feel the back of my hand if he's not very careful. Point of order! Uh, Mr. Mayor, I protest. Holy God, Exum! Vulgar God, Exhibition! Don't you it, <laughs> Appeal to close, sir. Oh, oh people have to suffer. Someone should quell his intention, this, sir. Oh, oh, oh. If I could appeal the heart stream now and just get these pillow gathering. You're the cause of this! You're the. Who's that? I've got to explain. explained. Mrs. Mayor! Some order of his name! Danger this, sir! Oh, folly in the crowd! Let's plead in the rules from this crowd! Oh, dear, please! If I could appeal the heart stream now and just get these pillow gathering happy, someone should indicate the cause of this thunderbolt! Hey, Gabblemouth, why don't you shut up? Good, no, that was cold, dear. The hardy crown that waffle. I have been insulted by a man unfit to clean my shoes. It wasn't me. It was that idiot reporter. It was nothing of the kind. Try to wriggle out of it, are you? You yellow belly. Point of order. Mr. Nottage, do something, please. I've gone under the sill with this chamber. What's the slow which have the whole trap? I would not suppress his sound in my own heart. I've got a bra with this chamber. Mrs. Thing, me. Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Baseball, can't you remove this person? That is the last of the coffee. Well, no. I don't want any more coffee. Oh, that's about to go already. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, what happened? Oh, uh, well, Alderman Cochrane said... <laughs> he said... He said he was going to clump Councillor Edge round the ear hole. <laughs> well, go on. <laughs> I've done a hard thing, but I'm... Susanna's a wonderful sow. Susanna's a wonderful sow. Look, have some more coffee, please. Go on with the story. <laughs> a lady hit a man <laughs> on top of the head. <laughs> who? Hit who on top of the head? Y you silly little man. A lady hit a man on top of the head. Oh, 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 o
The meeting was adjourned, that's all. Oh, take it off, I'll sponge it. Hello? Hello, Poppet. I've changed my mind. I'm on my way over to you. Look, darling, while I was talking to you, there was a riot at the council meeting. I oh, see. He had a couple of drinks and, well, I had to get the story out of him somehow. Eleanor, could we twist the angle a bit? Arrange it to suit ourselves? Give it an anti-labour slant. It'll appear as Shields' article. And get rid of him. See you later. Bye, darling. Bye. Do you know where I could get a bed, please? Not at this time of night. Yes, but I was just um, wondering if, well, you know, perhaps you could fix me up at, at your place with a... Police station? Hmm. Haven't done anything wrong, have you? Who, me? No. No! Then keep moving. What, all night? distorted all the facts. According to her, Shields started the whole thing. Oh, no. Well, what are we going to do? Sack him. Uh, now, wait a minute. After all, he has got... Uh, what? what? Potentialities. Potentialities? He hasn't even come in yet. Mr. Shields, could you spare a moment of your valuable time? Major Bartlett would like to see you in his office. 
What for? What for? We've got to write one here, haven't we? You've only been on the staff a few days and you've got the entire town council at each other's throats. Do you know, Mr. Shields, that because of you, Councillor Quilter is in hospital with concussion and a wound that needed five stitches? The Councillor Edge, who is Major Bartlett's agent, is in bed with nervous prostration and that Councillor Mrs. O'Connor has not only resigned from the council but from public life? And why do you think the Major wants to see you in his office? Sack. Good boy. Morning, Major. Morning, Ellen. Oh, Miss Lampton. You wanted to see me, sir? Simply to congratulate you. <laughs> Congratulating me? On your splendid article. Yeah, look, it wasn't really me. <laughs> With Miss Lampton. <laughs> it was your story, Mr. Shields. No, fair's fair. <laughs> she... She wrote it. Yes, but from the facts you gave me, my dear, I mean, the credit is all yours. <laughs> well, if, if you say so. Good. So, we're all agreed that it was entirely your article. All agreed? <laughs> yeah. Good. Because it's thoroughly upset all the members of the council. Yeah. And I suggest you go to the mayor's house forthwith and apologise. On your way, Shields. No, do I have to really go and apologise? Because I don't borrow Pearson's bicycle and this time don't lose it. Right, Chief. And don't keep calling me Chief! Well, Roger and out, then. <laughs> you know something. Little Norman's got a thing about you. Good morning. May I be permitted to speak to Her Worship, my Lady Mayor? Please. Won't you sit down? Worship. I'm Shields of the Times. Yes, I remember you. Uh, perhaps you'd like to put your bicycle in the kitchen.
Take it. Oh, my dear, this is Mr. Shields of the Times. Mr. Shields, my daughter Liz. How do you do? How do you do? Shouldn't we let him down? Put your glasses on, you silly girl. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Still no mind. It's nice to have a bit of peace and quiet, isn't it? It's my husband. Ernest, is that you, dear? Who the hell do you think it was? What maniac left that bike in the kitchen? Mr. Shields of the Times. Daddy, do keep calm. I will keep calm when I'm good and ready and not before. And put your glasses on, girl. You're blinking like a pedestrian crossing. All right, what do you want? Well, I came about last night's council meeting, so you made a mistake. But last night, oh, I'll deal with this, dear. Uh, you two go and make a cup of coffee, eh? <laughs> but I wanted to apologize. Uh, come and have a drink, Shields. Uh, oh, oh, no, I've packed it up. Last night's council meeting, eh? Yes, see, I was responsible because, you know, it was me who said it and not Mr. Edge. Of course it was. <laughs> I knew it all the time. <laughs> Do you think I'm deaf, then? <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have been Edge, anyway. <laughs> Why not? Because <laughs> he hasn't got the guts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like an item of real interest for your paper? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's OK. Oh, dear. Now, then. Here we go. <laughs> there is only one man that matters in Tinmouth. Only one. Only one. And that is oh. Alderman Ernie Corcoran. Sure. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Major Blasty <laughs> Bartlett knows that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet he won't even have the nerve to turn up on Saturday. <laughs> Where? Well, to the Kier Hardy Estate, you fool. Was, uh, the opening of the Thousandth uh, House. Yeah. 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 With an election just around the corner, mm -hmm. that will be worth 500 votes to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when that time comes, what? there'll be a new man on the train for Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> no Major Blasted Bartlett. No, oh, no. Not him, not him. <laughs> yeah. Guess who? I don't know. Guess who? I mean. Oh, I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I had to run the field of my tongue. <laughs> 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 That's right. Here, off you go. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget, uh, eh? <laughs> oh, well, I couldn't forget it all down. <laughs> Publish and be damned. Publish and be damned. Aren't you going to stay for some coffee? No, better not, thanks. Oh, your bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it must be awfully exciting. Oh, yeah, well, it's all right going down there, but uphill gets the back of your legs a bit. Oh, no, I mean working on a newspaper. Oh. Uh, the presses and everything. Oh, yeah, that's exciting, too. Well, why don't you pop in sometime? I'll show you around. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, don't you think it would be easier out the back way? Oh, safer. 
Little Norman strikes again. But it's a truth, Mr. Corcoran, word for word. You have a lot to learn, sweetie. Now, Mr. Shields, would you be so kind as to pop along to the Major's office? He would like a few words with you. So, Alderman Corcoran is to be on the first train to Westminster, not me. What he said? And you expect me to publish that in my newspaper? Publish and be damned, he told me, so there it is. Get out. Out? Out! Out of the office. Out of this town. Out of the country. What? Who? Look, can't you speak up? Oh, oh, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, he's right here, sir. He wants to speak to you. Hello, Grandad. No, well, it's no good, I don't... Well, I can't help it. So I should be back at Westminster tomorrow, it looks like. He's going uh, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, look, he must have misunderstood. <laughs> no, he's a great asset to the newspaper. Yes. Oh, no, sir, no, 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 I promoted him. Yes. Uh, to, um, a political and municipal correspondent. <laughs> Yes, he's a splendid fellow. <clears throat> Chip off the old block. Yes, sir. Right, Mr. Prime Minister. Political and municipal coy. What, what do you reckon will be my first assignment, then, sir? Keir Hardy Estate. Tomorrow. The Thousandth House. Oh, uh, old Cochran mentioned that. Said it'd be worth 500 votes to him. And another thing he said. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you, really. <laughs> <laughs> he reckon you'd be scared to go. <laughs> oh, he did, did he? Yeah. Send Mr. Ross in, please. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him. Ah, Mr. Ross, wouldn't you be so kind as to pop along to the Major's office? He'd like a few words with you. The Major said, my dear lad, you are an asset to the paper. So, we have a new political correspondent. Political and municipal. And municipal. Rather a long felt one, don't you think? Miss Lambton, shouldn't you be at a baby show? I'm on my way. Eleanor. Uh, Eleanor. Look, if I don't go soon, those babies are going to be out of lessons. Oh, Eleanor, coming out tonight, look, I must celebrate. Let me take you out to dinner, eh? Come on. Oh, all right. Just this once. Victorian Hotel. Uh, up past seven. Right. <laughs> wanted to do that. I'm supposed to be meeting a girlfriend, but I'm early. Oh. I'm supposed to be meeting someone, too. <laughs> if we waited together, you could teach me to wiggle my fingers. Will you order now, sir? Will you have to drink, Miss Cochran? Well, please call me Liz. Um, orange squash. I don't drink alcohol. One orange and two orange squashes. Uh, 
Um, uh, your dad's quite a character. Oh, I'm glad you liked him. He liked you too, I can always tell. <laughs> oh, no, honestly, after you'd gone, he said, I think that young man's going to be very useful to me. Oh, did he? Well, all that stuff about the Keir Hardy estate and Ernest Cork from being the only man who matters, Major Bowley wouldn't publish. I'm not surprised. It's a Tory newspaper. Well, I am covering the opening of the 1,000th house tomorrow, and they're going to print what I say. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you found a little friend, because it's too awful. I just can't make it tonight. I I'm stuck with some dreadful office thing. A uh, press can... girl's life isn't her own. Sweetie, I'm so sorry. Believe me. Oh, but I didn't... I'll explain all about it in the morning. Now, have fun, you two. got some lovely clothes. I'm sorry, Norman. Liz. Yes, Norman? Put your hands together. Now, press your fingers down. No, only the two middle ones. Liz, look, look. Now, put your glasses on again, eh? Right, now, finger exercises begin. Turn it down. of a building, not throwing. Ha! Thank you. Oh! Sorry, sir. I didn't notice you was in there. I nearly did it again. Ah! Don't worry, just shut your eyes and don't look down. Oh. Hey! No, really, you're all right, dear. Yeah, yeah. Come along. Oh, don't get a chair. Oh. Thank you. 
And now this great mode, which hath asked through in this afternoon for the launch of this 1,000 low rich houses culminate in the progressive third of this council's thigh. And we're gracious all the august prince, of Lady Mayor Thrower, holding the gallery, and Major Bartley Court, the commissioner, as the self-made man which gave the newspaper, beneficent and throughout the whole humanity's throw. Oh, it's the family gobstall, that's great for this house, which gave them the tenor mold and the slummery, slummery, and the pleasant prospect and the heart load of the strill. And now the mode is called for introducing the false of Major Throw, Mayor and Bartley. Your Worship, Mr. Town Clerk, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind about all the speeches. When are we going to get into our house? Now, wait a minute, please. As your Conservative Member of Parliament, I must congratulate your Labour Corporation on reaching our target of 1,000 houses at last. Your target? Twaddle! You lot just talk, we build. Who cleaned up the whole idea of this estate? Who built it? Never mind who did what. Cut the politics. When are we going to get in? No, 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 please, please, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here this afternoon. And now, without more ado, I will formally open the 1,000th house with this golden key. 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 Key? Key? The key. Key? Now sit down, everyone, and don't panic. I know just where to find it. Keep talking, Mr. Mayor. Don't sit down. I'm taking the chair away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would, I know, be doing less than my duty were I not to, to thank all the people behind the scenes who have worked so hard on the uh, plumbing. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then, of course, we must have to... <laughs>
look what you've done! You and your politics! I've got to get back to the paper. Ta-da! Well done, Corcoran. Darling, the, um, the Keir Hardy estate article's on your desk. Just sign it, will you? Sign it? I, I haven't even written it yet. <laughs> I did it for you. On the Major's instructions. Oh. I see. Well, uh, thank you. What's the hurry, Eleanor? Darling, I have a date. I have to bath, change and be out again by eight. Oh, where are you going? Is that any business of yours? Yes, it is. Who's this special man that you have got to have a bath for? Now, you've no right to question me like this. Oh, yes, I have, because I love you. I do love you, Eleanor. Norman, you must get this nonsense out of your head. Now, look, we'll have a nice long chat later this week. I promise you. It's Major Bartlett you're seeing tonight, isn't it? Well, if you must know, yes, it is. I thought so. Well, he is the boss, isn't he? And my future husband. You said to drop in. Did I? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Look, if you're busy writing your article about this afternoon, I... Oh, no, it's not really busy. It's been written for me. Major Bartlett's approval slip. on the Keir Hardy estate, the opening ceremony of the 1,000 house was a happy occasion for all concerned. Major Bartlett's witty speech was... Golden key to happiness? Delighted family take up residence? It's a load of lies. Well, if you know. What are you going to do about it? What can I do? We're not going to let them get away with it, are you? Make them print the truth for once. I can't. What about Major Bartlett? Oh, blast Major Bartlett and his party politics. About your father? With all due respect, blast him, too. <laughs> oh, Liz. Anyway, they'd never print it. They would if you put on Major Bartlett's approval slip. Um... Sorry, um... Disaster hits, uh, hits the Kirardi estate. House falls down. Morning, Rebbe. Morning, Major. Indeed. What the devil are you doing in my office? Have you gone stark staring mad? Cutting your own throat as well as mine? What are you talking about? Look at that. House collapses at opening ceremony. Both political parties claim credit this isn't the article I authorised. All right, then. Who the hell wrote it? There could only be one person. Shields. Now, look, Bartlett. You get rid of that little idiot reporter of yours, because if you don't, some of your unsavoury behaviour is going to be exposed at the forthcoming election. Unsavoury behaviour? Oh, there's going to be mudslinging at the election, is there? Anyway, what election? Oh, let's not kid ourselves. You know very well what election. Take my advice. Get rid of Shields. 
this article. How did it get in? It had your approval slip on it. Absolute disaster. Take Shields off politics and put him somewhere where he can't do any harm. Entertainments. Yes. Good morning, Major. Get out, Miss Poppins. Uh, but the rubbish get out, out Miss Poppins. About housing. Get out. I must get rid of that woman. Get out. But not you, dear lad. Once again, I must congratulate you. An excellent article. Really? Well, it isn't exactly good for you, is it? Oh, oh, Mr. Cochran. That is exactly what I like about the article, Shields. It's so entirely unprejudiced. So in future, you'll be covering entertainments. What is, what is politics? Instead of. But I like writing about politics. And it could give me a chance to help someone. What better way of helping the townspeople than making them happy? Entertainments. I like politics. I'll ask Granddad. Oh, no, 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 no. If you can find a way of actually promoting entertainments, this newspaper will back you all the way. Well, you mean I can arrange and, and um, organize things? Anything you like. I didn't hear you ring. You're Willoughby. I know who I am. Who are you? I'm Shields of the Times. A reporter. I did the choice. I'm in charge of entertainment. Entertainment? There isn't any. Except what we make ourselves. Uh, what are your plans for the holiday crowds this year? Same as last year. Mm -hmm. And funnily enough, the year before that. None. None? But this is a holiday resort. This is a last resort. What have we got to offer them? We've got a chocolate machine with no chocolate in it. We've got two speak your weight machines with the voices gone. And we've got a distorting mirror that's cracked. On Major Bartlett's authority, our paper will back you all the way. Major Bartlett? That's interesting. All the way? All the way. Uh, memo to Ross. As my election campaign has now started, you will virtually be in charge. What do you want, Shields? I have had the most marvellous... I've had the most marvellous idea, and Willoughby's can help me. Who's Willoughby? The town entertainment's office. Oh, him. Well, type it in triplicate and submit it in the usual way. Oh, I can't wait for all that. Look, this is a beauty contest with girls. Very novel, but not in keeping with the dignity of the newspaper. Dignity of the newspaper? Oh, what do you reckon? A beauty contest could be very dignified, Major. And I could enter for it myself. <laughs> Uh, yes. A dignified beauty contest. Yeah. Busy, Major? Uh, oh, we're just organizing a beauty contest. Oh. How interesting. <laughs> 
Uh, it was Shields' idea. Uh, thank you, Miss Fairchild. If you want me, Major, you've only to buzz. So you're using the new girl now, instead of Miss Popkiss. Uh, yes, she's much faster. <laughs> that I can well believe. Now, darling. Well, now, um, uh, uh, shall I carry on with my beauty contest column? Yes, do, Shields. I, I do about 500 words. Beauty contest twaddle! And then he has the gall to criticize the Labour Council for no summer shows, cracked distorting mirrors, chocolate machines with no chocolate in them. It's a dirty, filthy libel. Dirty, filthy truth, Daddy. Liz, dear. Well, I'm sorry, but it seems like that to me. Well, holiday makers don't come here. What's the use of having a beauty contest? But I think Norman's right. Norman? Perishing little half-wit. He might not sound very clever to you. And perhaps he doesn't always put things very well. But at least when he says or does something, it's because he believes in it. Not because he thinks he's going to get something out of it. I thought for one instant that you were getting interested in that, that, that midget reporter. I'd have him run out of this town so fast. Yes, 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 Time. That's all right. We're all ready now. Are the bills all here? Well, I'll count them. Uh, th there should be seven. Ah! Oh! What happened? Um, only six. Liz! I just came to wish you luck, Norman. If there's anything I can do to help, I... Can help. Will, will you be a contestant? One of the girls hasn't turned up. Do you think I dare? Why not, Liz? Come along now. Don't let's talk rubbish. I say you're a bit late, aren't you? We were just going to put a substitute in. What? Her? Right. Liz, get changed. Oh, but I haven't. We'll really... borrow some. Right, it's time. Now, don't forget what I told you. You're in complete charge backstage because I shall be down there comparing, so good luck. Chocolates? Cigarettes? Cold drinks? All those posters we put out and nobody's interested. Men not interested in girls, I can't believe it. It's unhealthy. Oh, the, the judges look after them. seconds before you take the curtain up. Where's the pianist? No, pianist! You'll have to play. I'm the compare down there. And the pianist down there.
Miss Elizabeth Rivers. <laughs> Miss Penelope Squires. <laughs> and now, Miss Ruby. Our child. A young lady who, when you see her, will take your breath away. <gasps> like that. Luscious, scrumptiously attractive and beautiful. Miss Liz Corcoran. Bring down the curtain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your voting cards? I think you'll find we're all agreed. Norman! Winner. Ruby Fairchild. It's rigged. The Major. Don't worry, it's none of our business. Ruby Fairchild. Ladies and gentlemen, on this piece of paper, I have the name of the beauty queen of Tinmouth. And when the curtains part, you will see her on the throne. You keep out of this. Gentlemen, I would like to say a few words. I join you in this. Gentlemen, I must ask you to conduct yourself in the dignified manner which this ancient town is accustomed. This demonstration is an obvious example of organized labor hooliganism, and it will not be tolerated. That Bartlett is a remark that you will live to regret. Our labor stock has never stood higher than it does today. This entire trumped up beauty contest is nothing more than a Tory book catching conspiracy. Now you're trying to sabotage the years of dedicated sacrifice I've given to this constituency. Dedicated sacrifice? You've only ever spoken once in the House of Commons. 
And that was to ask if a window could be opened. Look, I'm going now. You're going all right. You're fired. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. But before I do go, don't you two ever think of anybody else but yourselves? I mean, you're both intelligent men. I wish I had your brains. Turn on the mic. You're a member of Parliament. And I soon will be. Who knows? Over my dead body. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's the matter with you two? Why don't you leave off? All you do is bicker at each other. Now, let me have my say. As I see it, you two are like... captains of a, a sort of people's ship of life. And they rely on you two to steer them on a safe course. But because of your own selfishness, you keep on taking them into storms with big waves. And if you and all the other politicians and the leaders of the world don't work together, you know, one of these days... Open the curtains. You're going to drown all the people. Here. Oh, I've been talking a lot, haven't I? I have to get off my soapbox. <laughs> Well, I'll, uh, I'm going back to my paper stand in Westminster. Goodbye, Bye. sir. Well done, Norman. Go on, take a bow. Bye, Robin. Bye, bye. Give those to Liz for me. I'm going, Liz. Why? Well, I don't think I've been successful here, do you? Yes, I do. I've just seen Daddy and Major Bartlett having a drink together at the Victoria Hotel. That's a good start. Yeah, good start. Bye. Norman! Couldn't I come with you? Well, what about your dad? He'd lose a daughter, but he'd gain a son. Yeah. <whistles> come on, we'll miss the train. No, we haven't. <laughs> 